This is the first video in a series as I start this project to do my first playfield swap on this Skeft Sift machine. You can see the playfield is badly worn. Almost all the inserts are damaged, some so badly the ball is actually diverting as they roll over them. This series is going to be about 25 or 30 videos. It's going to cover every step of my first playfield swap. So this is the Merco playfield that I bought, which I'll be swapping all the parts over from the old damaged uh, playfield over to. And just to show you, after about 100 hours that it took me to do the swap, this is how it turned out. I actually got there in the end. You can see I did a full refurb of the crate and added the boogeyman mod. So just before you get stuck into the first video in the series, take five seconds to, to subscribe to the channel and turn on alerts to make sure that you get kept up to date as I release these videos as I get time to edit them and release them. So first steps first, I need to get the apron off, the back off, so I can mount this on the second rotisserie that I've built. That'll go, it's sitting here empty, so I can have the rotisseries side by side with the new play field over there and the old one here. These are built for under a hundred bucks. If you want to know how to do that, check out the link up there. Anyway, let's get going. I'm going to get the uh, play field ready to go onto the rotisserie. So I know that the acoustics in this room are terrible, but it's nice and clean and it's a great place to work. So I might over the next couple of days put a carpet in or something to make it better. But let's get the uh, let's get the apron up. To mount this nicely, I need to remove these brackets at the bottom. Just been having a look at what areas I need a little strip here of um, maybe three quarters of an inch, uh, one and a half centimeters basically, just to rest on the angle to mount this play field. So I'm going to have to remove this little coil which drives this and possibly one lamp down here. So let me start by taking out this okay. and then this lamp here So that's been removed now, I've got a nice space here, so now I can mount this and then start doing some work. Um, I wonder if it's worthwhile taking this off first. Um, let me have a look at what's involved with that. Okay, so I need to remove this backboard. So I've removed three screws that sit between the play field and go into the board. And then I'm just going to remove these two screws here on this side, the same on the other side, and then there's one or two screws holding ramps in place. So let me get to doing that quickly.
put those back in. And let's do the same on the other side. first connectors that I'm plugging so I'm actually going to get into labeling those now first. I'm just using painter's tape. I'm going to... And it's pretty obvious which ones go where but it's just going to make it so much quicker if I are able to, if I'm able to just number these. I'm literally just going to number them the order in which I've taken them out. So still trying to get this set up and it is a bit fiddly so um, to get this secured properly really what you need to do is to that you can turn the play field is I'm going to remove these so that I can really get the G clamp on properly and then on the other side the hooks that go into the um, The hooks that go onto the lock bar, I'm going to remove those too. Slowly but shortly, taking off far more than I was hoping before I start to properly document. But anyway, again, I'm just putting the screws back. And every time you do one of these, you're having to remove more than you bargained for. dirt underneath this. Actually quite scary. One of the other ideas I thought of doing is actually just drilling in from up, not drilling in, uh, securing it with the screws that we used on the back box going into the play field. But I think I'm going to carry on using the G clamps. Oh, let's get this plastic back in. I'm going to attach that to the back box. Other side. Okay, those are the two brackets. Now I can get it, get in and actually secure this properly. Then again, I've simply gone and attached it to this so that I know exactly how it goes, the screws, everything. I don't have to document that just yet. So I'll do the same on the side. So the last thing really is just to remove these hooks. They get stuck as it goes around. So I just take those out quickly. Um, and then we should be 100% good. got a T-nut and this one has got a nut and a T-nut which is a bit weird this is going straight back in And 
do the same on the other side. on this one. And when I start doing the, the swaps, I'll obviously clean up all of these screws, but until I've really got 100% ready to start the swapping, I just want to try to keep things as much as possible in their original place. Plates out, these will need to go in the top level polished up. And now, once I get these clamps on, this really is ready to turn. Let's have a look. There we go. Oh, of course, being scared stiff, what falls out? Frogs. So I'll put those aside. So now I can start to document. One of the good things about this is that um, all the boards and most of the solenoids have actually got Molex plugs on. So literally they can be swapped out very quickly. Unplugged and replugged, they're all numbered already. Um, so that's gonna make my job a lot simpler on this. There's one here, this solenoid here, that is one of the pops, um, is uh, these two pops are not, have not been, don't have Molex connectors, so I've put some Molex connectors on there. But other than that, from what it looks like, pretty much every single one looks like it's got a Molex connector on it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, the next few videos will be the starting of the teardown of the top of the playfield, preparing the new playfield, and then installing the T nuts onto the new playfield. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series.